Are you sitting down? You should probably be sitting down. Because I'm about to share with you some tragic news that you probably knew deep down, but you didn't want to admit. Harry Potter isn't real. I know, I know that it's hard to hear, but it's the truth, okay? The film adaptations of the beloved book series are so great that you often get immersed in them. That's why certain behind-the-scenes drama and secrets really take away the magic. They'd be terrible if they weren't just so stinking juicy and fascinating that we couldn't help but look. We get insights into our favorite actors and the process that brought the films to life. So, let's dive into the best secrets behind the Harry Potter film franchise. The Harry Potter films brought together one of the finest extended casts of British actors ever assembled. The only thing I could think that would rival it would be the Game of Thrones series and that was several years after Harry Potter. But you gotta admit, Harry Potter definitely had the better ending, yeah? That being said, when you assemble a team of the greatest Shakespearean divas ever assembled, there's bound to be some drama. In the 1990s, actors Kenneth Branagh and Emma Thompson were an acting power couple. Their chemistry was palpable when they appeared in Much Ado About Nothing. So, what could have possibly come between these two actors? Well, the answer to that is simply Helena Bottom Carter. Thompson discovered that Branagh and Carter were having an affair during the filming of Frankenstein. This caused their marriage to come to an appropriately dramatic conclusion. So, if you've ever wondered why Trelawney, Bellatrix Lestrange, and Gilderoy Lockhart weren't in any scenes together, huh? Now you know. During the filming of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, director Alfonso Cuaron took his role very seriously. The three actors who played Harry, Ron, and Hermione played students for years, but they never expected homework. Cuaron gave Daniel Ratcliffe, Emma Watson, and Rupert Grint an essay assignment. He wanted all three of them to write about their characters to help them connect deeper to the roles. The trio showed Karan that they never needed to write the essays in the first place. They were already just like their characters. The three actors went about the process exactly as their fictional counterparts would. Emma Watson wrote a long 16-page essay that detailed everything that she thought about Hermione Granger, which is exactly how the overachieving Granger would take on the assignment. Though, I mean, let's be honest, hers would probably be closer to 50 pages, right? Daniel Ratcliffe took the assignment to heart, but he didn't go about it the same way that Watson did. He wrote a meaningful essay that got straight to the point. It may have only been one page, but it was apparently very insightful. This is exactly the sort of direct path that Harry would prefer. Rupert Grint, on the other hand, didn't write the essay at all. And come on, is there anything more wrong than that? Daniel Ratcliffe, like many child actors before him, has had a rough time dealing with his early fame. As much as fans loved him, tabloids seemed to love him even more. Everyone's seen the meme of the obviously strung out young actor entering a cab. Evidently, the pressure drove him right into the bottle. He admitted that he would get drunk every night during the filming of the movies. While he said that he never got drunk during the shoot, he apparently would wake up drunk for some of the early calls. That being said, Ratcliffe has commendably overcome his addiction. Now look, everyone struggles now and then, so we shouldn't be too hard on the guy. He's gone from being a fictional role model to a real life one. Now he shares his stories about alcoholism to help those struggling with the condition themselves. He also got revenge on the paparazzi in the most ingenious way. Apparently the actor would wear the same outfit every time he'd go out in public. It would just look like they were trying to sell old photos. They should have paid more attention to the movies, really. I mean, Harry Potter always wins in the end. Every Potterhead loves a good Alan Rickman story. The late actor had a particularly deep bond with his character. We know now that J.K. Rowling told him the secret that got revealed in the final story. Unfortunately, she didn't give that information to the directors. So Rickman was constantly getting into arguments with directors over how the character should be portrayed. This apparently caused quite a bit of friction. I mean, he would even yell at them that he knew what was going to happen in the end, and they didn't. If you think you've had a bad day at work, imagine being yelled at by Snape about a film you're supposed to be in charge of. And one can only imagine that Alan Rickman could choose someone out in a distinctly brutal fashion. When you think of Dumbledore, you usually think of the stoic and wise old mentor that he presents himself to be. 
you might also think of him as the morally dubious old wizard that neglected to tell Harry information that he would need. It's also possible that you might think of him as the ridiculously sexy Jude Law version, which is fair. What you probably don't think of him as is a guy who walks around with a farting machine. The Harry Potter cast had a lot of fun over their years together. The older actors got to watch as the kids grew up into adulthood. That doesn't mean that they were always the mature ones, though. Snape and Dumbledore stars Alan Rickman and Michael Gambon decided to pull quite the prank during Prisoner of Azkaban. You may remember the scene in the movie where all of the kids are sleeping in the Great Hall. Well, apparently the scene took quite the hilarious turn. You see, the two older actors stuck a small machine that made farting noises into Daniel Radcliffe's sleeping bag. So while Dumbledore was giving his monologue over Radcliffe's head, he pressed the remote that activated the machine. So to everyone else, it sounded like he was farting over Gambon's lines. He'd even apparently asked the director to position his bag next to a very pretty girl working on set, which doubled the hilarity. Fans got pretty attached to the kids in the Harry Potter films. Even smaller characters like Draco's henchman Crabbe and Goyle were beloved by Potterheads. That's why it was so noticeable when Crabbe was missing from the later films. In fact, he was replaced entirely by a different character, Blaze Zambini and Draco's evil entourage. The reason for this was pretty scandalous at the time. Crabbe actor Jamie Waylett was fired from the series after he made headlines and tabloids everywhere. Waylett actually got arrested for growing illegal substances. And if you don't know what it was, Snoop Dogg and Willie Nelson both love it, and it rhymes with Cara Jorn. If that wasn't enough, though, Waylett was arrested yet again in 2011. He was apparently participating in the London riots and was sentenced to prison for two years. Hopefully, he didn't have any problems with the Dementors, because according to the office's prison mic, The worst thing about prison was the, was the Dementors. That's the worst part about going to jail. One of the biggest arguments Potter fans have is which of the two main Dumbledores is their favorite. Most conversations about the Jude Law version do include links to their smutty fanfiction, so be warned. Many think that Richard Harris's twinkly-eyed and mysterious take on the character was much more magical. They think that Michael Gambon was much too grumpy and mean as the famous wizard. They also frequently mock the famous, did you put your name in the goblet of fire scene. Other fans think that Gambon's performance was better at representing the complexities of the character. That being said, there was almost a completely different actor cast after Harris's death. The first choice was apparently the other famous wizard actor, Ian McKellen. The Gandalf actor was apparently approached to play the role, and his primary objection had nothing to do with playing another wizard, but had everything to do with an old beef with Harris. The older actor apparently gave an interview about the popular Shakespearean acting generation that followed his. When asked about actors like McKellen, Derek Jacoby, and Kenneth Branagh, he didn't have kind words for them. He said that they were technically proficient, but passionless. McKellen said that these comments were, quote, rubbish. He then went on to say that he would never accept a role from an actor who disapproved of him. And that is why he decided to not take the part. It's basically like Eminem vs. Machine Gun Kelly, except much classier. The original Harry Potter films feature some of the best effects out there. For the most part, they're so good that that's why you become engulfed in the world. That's why it was so heartbreaking to see some of the scenes where the CGI has been removed. There are several videos out there now that show the secrets behind the magical scenes. Things like Quidditch on a blue screen, the puppet monsters, and Voldemort's face with a real nose all look strange. What's most disturbing though are the shots of exterior Hogwarts. Sure, the miniature model that they use is impressively built, the thing is that seeing it breaks the illusion that there's a real Hogwarts out there that you can visit. I guess if you want, you're just gonna have to go to Orlando for that. It's hard to even think of Lucius Malfoy without imagining actor Jason Isaac's portrayal of the character. As iconic as he is in the role, it's crazy to think that he almost wasn't in it. He apparently auditioned for the role of Gilderoy Lockhart in Chamber of Secrets and not Malfoy. When they offered him the other role, he had reservations about accepting it. The other film he was working on was Peter Pan, where he played Captain Hook. He wasn't sure if he wanted to play two children's villains in a row. Evidently, his entire family, nieces, nephews, and even godchildren, called him and made him rethink his decision. Isaacs took the role, but it wasn't smooth sailing on from there. Because see, then he read the books and watched the first movie in horror. 
he realized that not only was he playing a beloved character in a love to hate kind of way, but he also had competition. Apparently he didn't know that Alan Rickman was in the original film. The thought of having to be another villain in a movie that featured the ultimate villainous actor was terrifying. It also motivated him to take the character more seriously. The costume designers originally had Lucius with short hair and a pinstripe suit. He was the one who asked for the long hair and robes, thinking that Lucius would never wear muggle clothes. Isaacs also had the idea for the iconic snake cane, which was great, but the cane ended up being a problem a little later on. See, there's a deleted scene in Chamber of Secrets where Lucius scolds Draco. Isaacs decides to strike the Draco actor, Tom Felton, with the cane. What he didn't realize was that the snake on the top had sharp fangs. So when he struck Felton, the fangs sunk into the young actor's head. This made the young actor tear up, which was not what Isaacs was expecting. He ended up apologizing and the two ended up becoming close afterwards. There are a lot of problems when you have a large cast of child actors. For one, you can only have them work for a certain number of hours a day. They also have to keep up with their studies during the production. Not only that, but there's cleanliness issues as well. See, during Chamber of Secrets, production had to be halted due to an unfortunate incident. Apparently, the cast had a lice outbreak. This caused a major incident that was no doubt a huge embarrassment for the young infested actors. The production of The Prisoner of Azkaban had its own problems with the young actor. This problem had less to do with an infestation and more to do with puberty. Evidently, the actors had acting so bad that the special effects team had to be called in. These poor designers had to scour through every frame of the film to remove the blemishes. That's probably their favorite story to tell at cocktail parties. And there you have it, all the best secrets and drama behind the film franchise. Which story was your favorite? Let us know in the comments section down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.